On day two, the focus for the land and air trials shifted. Teams now had to navigate inside the building, finding points of interest and marking waypoints. This posed a particular challenge to the aerial teams. We spoke to one of the judges to ask why this poses such a challenge. Hello, my name is Alan Bell. I'm working here today as Aerial Safety Coordinator. We have started with the second air trials, which are involving indoor flying. Um, there will be several teams trying to fly inside the building. They will, they will be doing inspection of the building and trying to map the whole indoor area, detect some points of interest, missing workers, and all kinds of OPIs. We started yesterday with the outdoor aerial robot, which have been flying on the beach and around the building. Today, they're focused on in flying inside. The main difficulty of flying in the building is you have no GPS. So flying in the, um, denied GPS scenarios is really difficult and really tough for the teams. They have a really um, weak uh, radio communication with all the walls, and it's really a challenge for them to be able to succeed in this mission today. So the main goal for today is for the team to be able to fly inside the building, create a 3D map and send that information to the ground robot so they, when they get in the building they know the unobstructed path to the machine room as we call it, where they will have to do their safety tasks, close valves or maybe re um, rescue a worker or such on. With this in mind, the teams had to make a lot of changes to their robots. We spoke to the Icarus team to find out what was their biggest issue. Today task it was very difficult. We were supposed to use our aerial robots to go inside the building and look for people and other things. This is very challenging because inside the building you have no GPS signal, it's really low visibility, it's practically dark and it's a really confined area so it's really easy to hit the walls. We were not intending to practice today because we work on outdoor robots that look for people in the beach and uh, we finally came out with the idea to fly around the building and use our thermal camera to look through the window. That doesn't give you a regular image because it's completely dark. It measures things like temperature and we could actually detect things through the window in a complete dark room. The land teams also had to enter the building. Upon entering the building, the teams had to locate the machine room and shut off a valve. The second part of the underwater challenge also took part today, with teams attempting underwater manipulation. Today was the last day of the single domain trials. Tomorrow, teams have to combine their robots to undertake land and sea, air and land, and sea and air challenges. This is all leading up to the ultimate challenge. <laughs>